see what uh, the gentleman in Oxford have to say. Good evening, and thank you for gathering on short notice. This is a sad day for the University of Mississippi. Earlier today, we announced that Coach Hugh Freeze has resigned from his position as our head football coach, and it was important to meet with you, all of you, as soon as possible. As Vice Chancellor and Athletics Director Ross Bjork will explain shortly, Coach Freeze resigned this afternoon after confirming to Ross and me a pattern of personal misconduct inconsistent with the standards we expect from the leader of our football team. While Coach Freeze served our university well in many regards during his tenure, we simply cannot accept the conduct in his personal life that we have discovered. As you will soon learn, this matter is totally unrelated to the NCAA case. And our position on the facts documented in our response remains the same. Since we first learned last week of potential inappropriate conduct by Coach Freeze, Ross has led the effort to uncover the facts, which he completed yesterday, with the ultimate goal of protecting our institution and our student athletes. I'd now like to turn things over to Ross. Thank you, Chancellor Bitter, and appreciate your support. Thank you all for gathering on short notice. I know uh, some of you were trying to call my cell phone, so if I hung up on you, I apologize, or did not uh, text you back, I apologize. So as, uh, as Chancellor Bitter indicated, th this is a sad day. It's, it's an unexpected day, especially for our players, our coaches, and especially the Old Miss family. At this point, I'll, I'll walk you through how we got to where we are uh, tonight. Earlier this month, as, uh, as is reported, in response to a public record request, we released Coach Freeze's work-related phone records for six days in January of 2016. Coach Freeze redacted personal calls from those phone records before they were released. There was a phone call that was not redacted and it was brought to our attention in the middle of last week. We did a quick assessment and determined that this was the only time that that particular number was ever called from Coach Freeze's phone since he started working here at Ole Miss in 2011. Because the call lasted less than one minute and did not appear at the time to be part of a pattern, we initially attributed this call to a misdialed number. As part of our core values in running the athletics program, we have, uh, we have an obligation to do the right thing, so we proactively looked into the rest of his phone records. In our analysis, we discovered a pattern of conduct that is not consistent with our expectations as the leader of our football program. As of yesterday, there appeared to be a concerning pattern. So Chancellor Bitter and I spoke with Coach Freeze last night. We discussed the entire situation. Coach Freeze was very transparent, open, honest, and admitted the conduct. Earlier this afternoon, Chancellor Bitter and I met with Coach Freeze again. He offered his resignation and we accepted. He has taken responsibility and is accountable for his actions. Mm. We will respect his privacy and our thoughts and prayers are with him and his entire family. Coach Freeze addressed the coaches and football staff and the team within the last few hours and told them of his decision. As you can imagine, those were very raw, emotional, tough meetings for our coaches and our players. There's obviously never a good time to make this type of decision, especially with practice coming up in the season right around the corner. Matt Luke will serve as the interim head coach for the 2017 season. 
Matt is a great coach. He's a leader. He's a rock. He's an Ole Miss rebel. And I'm confident, and especially even more confident after watching him address the team, that he will lead this team and program through this difficult time, and we will support him in every way. In addition to Coach Luke, Wesley McGriff will be elevated to associate head coach. He's an important voice and face for our program. He provides an enthusiasm and leadership that our program needs at this time. As Chancellor Bitter indicated, it's important to note that this matter is not related to our NCAA case. We believe our response speaks for itself. As leaders, we must do the right thing at every step of the way, no matter the consequences. This has tested all of us in unimaginable ways. But I know that we will live by our core values every day, and our ultimate purpose is to serve our student athletes. We're asking everyone in the Ole Miss family to support our players, our coaches, and our university like never before. Thank you. Thank you, Ross. Ross has continued to provide outstanding leadership as Vice Chancellor, and I know he will handle this transition with integrity and the utmost care. Every decision made at this university is driven by what is best for our students and for our university. This is a very hard day. This is a very painful decision, but it is the right decision. I ask everyone in the Ole Miss family to pull together as we navigate this transition. Our student athletes, coaches, and staff will need our unwavering support in the coming months and throughout this football season. Together, we will weather this storm and reach new horizons. Now, we'll take questions. We have Ross, do you say a mic or do we have no, mic. Okay. Ross, do you say it's a pattern of personal behavior? Are you referring to calls to escort services? You know, I, I think we need to protect that information. Again, his privacy is, is important. Again, the conduct was just not something that we thought we could continue with him as our head coach. Do you guys have any regret over putting so much trust in hey, Coach Priest? I believe that our response, again, speaks for itself. I believe he has an established record that's well, well documented in terms of how he ran the program around compliance, and we still believe in that. Will a search for a new head coach begin immediately? It's about the team. The team is the focus right now. I told the football staff that the number one thing, the beginning and the end, is the team, and that's all that matters. I haven't even thought about a search. We had to get a plan in place. Right now, we start practice in less than two weeks. There'll be a lot of time to conduct a, a search for a permanent head coach. Just, just to clarify, he, he was allowed to address Keith? Yes, he was. And the coaching staff. How did that happen? He met with the staff around 6, the team at 6.30. <clears throat> How would you describe the meeting between he and the team? You know, there were several of us in the room. I thought um, they were locked in. You know, I thought uh, I saw some heads go down, as you might expect. Um, but I thought they handled it very, very maturely. Um, several of them came up and hugged me and Matt Luke and the coaches. And from what I could tell initially, they're ready to move forward. They went from there to individual position meetings to obviously talk through, you know, what just happened. We did the same thing when we announced the postseason ban, and so uh, unfortunately, we had a we had a routine for this, and um, because we've gone through a tough time before. But I thought, man, they were they were solid. They're ready to roll. We talked about you know forty some days till opening game, and I think they handled it very very well. Ross has been very aggressive about promoting his play cut image and um, 